What's up everyone, my name is Oscar and in this video I'll show you how I personally prepare for my hiking trips in the mountains. I like hiking, you like hiking, why not check out how I prepare for my trips personally. You might learn something along the way. Just saying. I'll show you everything, literally everything, from finding the actual trail that I'll be hiking to packing my backpack. But before we begin you maybe notice that things are looking a bit different over here. And that's because they are. I changed up the actual spot where I'm filming. I lost the hat because I thought that it was getting in the way of my perfect hair. And I added this fake IKEA plant because I thought that it's just what I needed to become big and successful on YouTube. Now you might be thinking, why am I telling you this? Well, that's because I need your help. I'm not sure if this setup looks a bit good and I think that this part over here looks a bit empty right now, so I need some ideas on what I could put there. I was thinking maybe I could put like a picture of Dan Becker or Craig Adams or something, but you know, I don't know, that's a good idea. So if you have anything better, just please let me know. So the first thing that I need to do is understand where I'll be going. I recently moved to southern Spain and I've been in a semi-lockdown for the past few weeks, which basically means that I wasn't able to leave the city. The good news is that this will end after a few days, so I will finally be able to go hiking to better locations, which is why I'm filming this video actually. Anyway, let's open up the map and decide where I want to go. I don't want to go too far though, maybe in a 100 kilometer range or something. Okay, so this is where I live and over here is the highest mountain range in Spain actually called Sierra Nevada which goes up to 3500 meters altitude. That's actually the main reason why I moved here. I've been up there a lot but mostly I've hiked in the western parts which are a bit higher and I haven't really explored the eastern part which is a bit lower and I think the highest peak is over here and is about 2600 meters. Now let's open up the weather forecast and as you can see in the top elevation levels it's pretty cold right now and actually there's a lot of snow so I don't really think that I want to go up there. Also <laughs> I don't think that I want to go up there if the wind speeds are currently at 110 meters per second. I've heard that you should probably stay away if the forecast shows that wind speeds are over 60 meters per second. The eastern region, which is this one, is about 2000 to 2500 meters in altitude. And it looks like the weather over there should be a bit better, at least after a few days. I don't know, I'll probably check when it's closer and adjust accordingly. I'm expecting some snow probably, so I'll definitely bring crampons. However, I can't really know how much snow is there actually at the moment, so I'll probably just go up there, check it out, and if the snow is too much, the, too much for me to handle, then I'll probably choose another trail, which is a bit lower in altitude, but we'll see. So as for finding the actual trail that I'll be hiking, I usually use Wikiloc. I already found one trail over here, but I'll show you the process on how I did that because maybe that will help you out the next time you're looking for some trails to hike for yourself. I went on Wikiloc, I clicked hiking trails, then show map. Then I selected the open street map because it's a bit better. Then I selected the loop trails filter so I can finish at the same place where I start. And I set the distance to over 30 kilometers and I applied all the filters. Oh, by the way, I think I forgot to tell you, but I'm thinking that I'll be hiking probably for three days, two nights, three days. So I'm thinking the total distance could be maybe 35 to 50 kilometers. After that, I navigated to the place that I actually want to hike, which is somewhere here. I'll be leaving my car over here because I've already left my car there one or two times. There's a small ski resort there with good parking. To find the actual trails, I clicked on search by passing area, selected the parking and clicked on search for trails starting here. Then I manually checked out each trail to find one that would be good for me. So I ended up with, where is it, this one. So this trail is 41 kilometers long and I think that's enough for me because there should be a lot of snow up there. 
I will be making a video probably, making a lot of photos and the sun actually already sets at 6 p.m. So I won't have a lot of time to hike during the day. For navigating, I'll be using my phone. So what I need to do now is download the .gpx file from Wikiluck. You do that by clicking download, file, and choose the .gpx file. You download it and then transfer over it to your phone. By the way, this is available only on the Wikiluck premium version, which is pretty cheap anyway, but it lets you download the trail files as .gpx. So for actually navigating the trail, I'm using another app called Gaia GPS, which has better offline maps compared to Wikiluck. It's free, by the way. So I open up the Gaia GPS app, click on the plus symbol, click on import file, and import the .gpx file that we transferred over to the phone. This makes the trail available offline on Gaia GPS. So what I need to do now when I'm hiking is just open up Gaia GPS and just follow the yellow line and I should be good. And if I want to read the, the description of the trail on Wikiluck, I just open up Wikiluck, read the description. But for navigating, yeah, Gaia GPS is definitely better. Now that we got the navigation and the weather sorted, the next step is to figure out what gear I'll actually be bringing. So I usually pack my gear like this. I lay everything out that I think I might need, and when I'm done, I open up a packing list from the REI's website and double check if I've forgotten something. For a backpack, I went with a 55 liter one, because I know I'll be bringing more gear than usual. For the sleeping pad, I'll be using one with an R value of 4.7, which should be good for freezing weather. I'll go with the REI Flash Air 1 Ultralight Tent, even though it's mostly meant for three season camping. I also shouldn't forget my camping pillow. Now, as my main sleeping bag, I use one that's warmed down to only about minus five degrees Celsius. At the moment, I don't have anything warmer, so if the forecast shows that it will be colder than minus five, I'll also bring my summer sleeping bag and sleep in two sleeping bags, which should keep me warm enough. I know it's kind of inefficient and heavy, but right now I don't want to spend money on a new warmer sleeping bag. Because there should be some snow, I'll bring my trekking poles and these cheap Amazon crampons, which I recently bought and I haven't tried them out yet, but they should provide enough traction on snow. For my cooking gear, I'll bring a full gas canister, a 750 milliliter cooking pot, a camping stove, some coffee and an espresso maker, a foldable cup, a spork and a towel. I keep everything in this red dry sack. For water filtering, I'll bring the Sawyer Micro Water Filter, two 1 liter pouches for dirty water, and a 750 milliliter bottle. As for toiletries and smaller things, I'll bring a toothbrush, toothpaste, hand sanitizer, some TP, sun spray, sunglasses, a pocket knife, and my first aid kit. In my first aid kit, I've also added some lip balm, ibuprofen, a lighter, and a small gear repair kit. For electronics, I'll be bringing a 20,000 mAh power bank, a headlamp, headphones, and an e-reader, because right now the sun sets at about 6 p.m. and I need to do something while I'm staying in the tent. For my camera gear, I'll bring a GoPro Hero 7 with a spare battery, my Canon M50 mirrorless camera with a 11 to 22 millimeter ultra wide Canon lens, some spare batteries for my camera along with a charger, an ND filter, the Rode Video Micro microphone, a lightweight tripod, and the Peak Designs camera capture clip. I usually keep some of my electronics in this dry sack and other ones, mostly my camera gear, which I might need to access quickly in a fanny pack that I keep around my waist. Now let's get into the clothing. I'll bring these Columbia insulated winter boots, which I haven't tried out yet, but they should be pretty warm, along with two pairs of merino wool socks. I'll definitely bring a thermal top and pants as well. For my pants, I'll just use regular hiking pants. On top of the thermal top, I'll be wearing a fleece jacket. If it gets too cold, I'll bring another fleece jacket and wear a waterproof and windproof rain jacket on top. I'll also bring a beanie and some warm gloves. I'm layering my top instead of bringing a warmer down jacket because I still haven't received my dawn jacket from REI. I've been waiting for that thing for over 40 days now, by the way. It's normal, by the way, for REI shipments to take super long to get to Europe. Now let's get into what food I'll actually be bringing. 
Ideally, I want to aim for about 3000 calories per day. So 9000 calories in total for three days. Probably I'll end up eating less and on the third day I'll finish early, but I'll still bring all 9000 calories in total just because I like to bring a bit of extra food in case something happens. For instance, if a blizzard comes and I have to stay in a shelter for a day or something, I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't have enough food for three days over here right now and the stores are closed today because there's some kind of a holiday in Spain. So I'll just show you what I'd usually bring. First of all, I like to bring some kind of oat bars to snack on during the day. They don't have many calories in them, so I bring about four to six for each day. For my breakfast, I like to eat some oats mixed with some dried fruit and some nuts. They're very high in calories and they're very lightweight, which is great. You just have to heat up a bit of water and your meal is ready. During the day, I'll usually eat some oat bars and nuts mixed with dried fruits and maybe I'll bring a few apples or, you know, some other fruit for the first few days because I don't want to heat up water during the day. And for the dinner, I'll usually eat some dehydrated meals, some couscous or some noodles. Basically something that weighs very little, that is very easy to make and that contains a lot of calories. By the way, you don't need to use dehydrated meals. In my opinion, they're kind of a waste of money. For instance, these noodles cost one euro and they have 500 calories. And this dehydrated meal costs seven euros and it has 690 calories. They're both very easy to make. They weigh about the same and in terms of taste, I actually prefer the noodles. I usually keep most of my food in this yellow dry sack. And now it's time to show you how I pack everything inside my backpack. I like to keep my sleeping gear in this large dry sack because it compresses everything and keeps them dry if I catch some rain. I'll store both of my sleeping bags in there, the extra pair of socks, the extra fleece jacket and my camping pillow in there. Then I'll compress everything and store that at the bottom of my backpack. I'll use the rest of the main compartment for storing my crampons, my cooking gear, my food, any pouches of water, if I'm carrying any at that time. And lastly, I'll put my rain jacket in there if it's too hot outside. When doing this, I try to pack the heaviest stuff as close as possible to my back. In the top pocket of the main compartment, I'll store my first aid kit and my toiletries. In the top lid, I'll put my electronics, my hat and gloves, and my sunglasses, in case I need to access any of them quickly. And lastly, I'll store all of the smaller items that I will need during the day in all of the smaller pockets all around the pack. Alright, so with all that, I'm basically all set to go. I'll probably go next week when the restrictions are lifted and I'll definitely film a video and post it on YouTube as well. I hope this video helped you out or you learned something along the way or maybe you're just here because you like the deep sound of my soothing voice. Whatever the reason, I thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you next time. But only if you subscribe.